Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about my last name. It's uh, the, one of the most complicated ones in, the, in this industry. Um, and it's usually the longest one. So if you ever organize um, a, uh, a type event and you have to make uh, name badges, uh, use my name um, uh, first as to make sure that the name, all, all names fit on the name badges. Um, so, okay, but this is not what I'm gonna talk about. Um, uh, I wanna talk about um, making a difference about type design and politics uh, today. Um, first, quickly about me, I do two things. Uh, this is my, um, uh, the old door sign at my, um, at my office. Um, I do Schrift Labor, which is a type foundry, um, uh, together with Miriam and Lisa, who are also here today, yay. Um, and uh, one and a half years ago, we, re we released our first um, retail fonts. We usually do uh, custom type. And, uh, and together with this uh, cute guy, I do a font editor uh, called Glyphs. Nice typeface, by the way. Um, and um, yes, so these are the two things I do, uh, Shrift Labor and Glyphs, uh, making type and making uh, type software. All right, back to the topic. Um, when we talk about um, design and politics, yeah, we have associations, yeah. Design can make a big difference uh, for getting political messages across, definitely, yes. But type design, what's the connection between type design and, and politics? Now you might argue, uh, Type is uh, uh, fundamental for political expression in general. Um, you have to use uh, letters for getting your political message across. Like here, uh, a call for a general strike in Portugal, or this um, typographic intervention um, in the Danish town of Aarhus. Um, Aarhus, the city that works for a few, like uh, protest typography. But of course, this is not necessarily the job of the type designer. Uh, the type, he, uh, this person could have used any, any font uh, for this. So I guess uh, when we talk about type design in politics, it uh, also comes down to um, what we understand uh, among the word political. Uh, what do we mean by political? Um, now you could argue political is what politicians do. So then if you make the connection between type design and politics, then uh, it would be politicians who make fonts, right? Um, there actually is one. Uh, this is a Georgian politician called Bessarion Gugushvili. Um, after the fall of the Soviet Union, he was uh, the Georgian prime minister for about half a year. And uh, then in the ensuing political turmoil, um, he got ousted and had to flee to Finland, uh, where he still lives today, I believe. And, uh, and he made a font, uh, or he contributed uh, Georgian uh, to the Nokia fonts, for instance. So if you uh, used to have um, a Nokia font, maybe you still have one, and you, ca you want to type Georgian in it, it's, it's, it's this guy's um, uh, let's see. Um, it also works the other way around, by the way, uh, type people uh, who go into politics. Uh, like uh, recently, Karima el uh she's technically not a type designer, but she's the co-founder of the P22 Type Foundry, uh, and, and she's now running for Senate in America, making it a better place, yay. Yes, um, so maybe one, one, um, uh, one of the better news uh, from the U.S. in recent days. <clears throat> okay, not talking about that now. Uh, or about um, uh, Jean-François Porges, uh, who um, uh, contributed to uh, the Macron campaign in, in France, uh, which was successful and, and uh, helped save us from another European country tumbling into um, a right-wing Putinist fascist uh, turmoil, uh, like, oops, sorry, like all sorts of other countries, including mine. <clears throat> okay, uh, wonderful. Yes, but um, if if we if if we narrow it down to just this aspect, to this very close aspect between type designers and politicians in 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 in, in one um, person, uh, then it becomes then then this talk would already be over, right? So. Um, so thank you, goodbye, have a nice day. Now, um, what I think, I think uh, when we talk about political, political means much more than that. Um, and when, it, when I want to talk about uh, type design in politics, I, 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 you can differentiate three topics at least, at least that's uh, how I do it. Um, you can be an activist type designer, you can uh, make a cultural intervention, or you can enable um, and, um, 
uh, I'll talk about that a little later, but first about activism. Um, now, there's a few type designers who are um, politically active. Uh, we've seen that one before. Um, and uh, I'll give you three quick examples. Uh, Chris Lozos from, uh, from the States. Um, he, he's a type designer, and he also makes, um, using his own typefaces, he makes political posters um, uh, like this one, um, and uh, using his typeface heads up for this. Uh, or about the school shootings in America. Yeah? So uh, you're ready for school in America, pack your books and bring your assault rifle so you can defend yourself. Um, and uh, he did many, many of these. So if, if, if you uh, Google him, um, then, then you find a lot of these things. He, he, he posts very actively on, um, on, on social media as well. Oh yeah, and he does um, funny uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, t-shirts. Hamburger von Stift, which is the, the uh, a word type designers like to use it, uh, when, when they start the font. Um, and yeah, would you like fries with that? Uh, this is Dan Reynolds um, uh, wearing it in Berlin. Okay, but you can argue uh, this is not necessarily type design in politics. This is poster design in politics. And he just happens to use his own typefaces for it. Okay, so let's take it a level further. Um, Jonathan Barnbrook. Um, he is a, uh, an English type and graphic designer, and he's most famous uh, for his works for David Bowie. He did uh, a couple of uh, record covers for him, uh, for artists like Damien Hirst, and for his um, work for the Adbusters um, political campaign, or the um, cultural campaign, actually. And, um, and he, but he did a lot of stuff. He supported activist groups, uh, charities, uh, he also did a lot of poster designs like Chris Lozos. And um, as I said, he's a type designer and he runs uh, a foundry called Virus Fonts. Uh, and each of these fonts, if you uh, uh, type it in the browser, has a little story behind it. Um, and uh, and there's, there's usually a political background uh, to it. Uh, I give you one example, um, a Dingbat font uh, for um, for the uh, for Olympic pictograms that tell the truth. Um, so here, you, you know the, uh, the, the pictograms for the Olympic Games, you know, with, uh, with these um, stick figures running and, and so on. And this is, these are the, uh, what's, what's really happening you know, behind the scenes at Olympic. Um, and uh, he, did it, uh, he did one version in 2004 and then updated it in 2012 for the London Olympics. And um, yeah, but uh, also, yeah, also here, uh, if you um, uh, if you want to get the political message behind it, you have to actually go on his website and read the the, the story uh, about the typeface, um, including the one about the Olympukes, uh, as it's called. And the funny thing is, here uh, the last paragraph of the explanation is that he he has to insist that that he's in, not in any way uh, affiliated to the International Olympic Committee. <laughs> in order to not get confused. Okay, all right, uh, so, but here again, you might argue this is not exactly the type design. Uh, this is the story that is told along with the type design. Um, and so we could take it again a level further in terms of activism. Uh, and, um, but uh, this, uh, this is Octavio Pardo from, from, from Spain. Um, and he did um, a font family called Tianan Men. Um, and he, he wanted to, um, uh, it, it was actually a Kickstarter project and it failed. And uh, he today says he's happy that, uh, uh, that it failed. Um, but the, the idea was to help make, p um, uh, to help make protest signs. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing about it is that, uh, that the, the various um, uh, uh, members of the Font family share the same metrics. And so you could first uh, type your protest message and set it on your, on, on your protest sign and then decide your level of anger, right? Um, so um, you see this, uh, the, the one, like Tiananmen strike would be like, yeah, okay, yes, I'm, I'm against it, but I'm not too loud, yeah? And if you're more discontent, you would go for Tiananmen guerrilla and if you're like Tiananmen revolution and so on. Um, and yes. So, uh, interesting idea, but uh, he says, uh, now with, in retrospect, it, it was a failed Kickstarter campaign to get this started. 
Um, in retrospect, he said it was a bad idea. It was pretentious to even call it um, uh, Tiananmen because it doesn't really have anything to do with this protest. They're way more serious. Um, and, uh, and he says it, it's even a bad idea to give people a font for setting protest signs because uh, you don't want to risk missing those, and I quote, superb handmade signs. And now, again, I quote, I'm happy that the project never got too far. He says. So this is um, the most activist typeface um, uh, you, could, uh, you could think of, um, or I could find, and, but it's, it's failed. So it, the, the uh, Octavio is not behind it anymore. And I kind of understand his uh, argumentation on this as well. OK, that, uh, that takes us. Uh, to the second um, category that I, um, I differ differentiate, cultural interventions. And there I want to uh, tell you about two people. Uh, one is um, the Croatian type designer Nikola Jurek. Um, and he made, uh, he comes from Croatia, and Croatian you can write in various scripts, amongst which Cyrillic and, um, and Latin. And the funny thing is, uh, if you, uh, there's a one to one relationship between the letters of all these scripts. So uh, you can basically uh, translate uh, or transliterate um, uh, um, from, from, from Latin to Cyrillic without losing anything and, and back again. Um, so that's, uh, that's his type. As you see that uh, uh, some letters are like, uh, uh, have two, uh, two sh letter shapes in, in them, sometimes the Cyrillic on top, sometimes uh, uh, the Latin on top. Um, and also with different vari variations uh, in order to uh, fit or not fit uh, the uh, uh, diacritic mark. And of course, those shapes like the A or the M or the O that are the same between Cyrillic and Latin, um, they, they take the full, full height. Uh, the story behind it, uh, or there's, there's a story he tells behind it, uh, or, the, or the, one of the inspirations to do this, uh, was um, the situation in the town of uh, in the town of Vukovar in the east um, um, of, uh, of Croatia, uh, and there is a, a Serbian minority, and and because they, uh, there there's a law uh, in in Croatia that if there's a significant significant minority um, that Serbian, then they can have their signs, all the official signs, uh, in Cyrillic as well. And uh, Croatian nationalists um, said, no, we did not fight the Yugoslavian war in order to have Cyrillic in our streets, right? And they, and they would destroy signs like this. Yeah? Um, and uh, so uh, there's a long story behind it. That they're, they're, the government uh, had police uh, protect the signs. And then it turned out that one of the policemen was actually one of the protesters also. And, they, and, the, and that sign got broken up and then remounted again, uh, I don't know how many times. Uh, sad story, we had people protesting a script. And, um, crazy idea, actually. But uh, his typeface actually um, uh, is in use. I, uh, one, my, my favorite use is this for a Bosnian, um, not even Croatian, Bosnian um, football team, the Dragons. Fantastic. Uh, um, Similar I, uh, thing is a project by um, Israeli type designer Liron Lavi Turkenich. Um, she is a typeface designer and researcher. She lives in, um, in Israel, of course, and she, uh, she designs multilingual typefaces specializing in Hebrew and Amharic. And she um, picked up on this idea. You know, in Latin, you can. Uh, the, the, most of the information for reading is in the upper half of the letters, right? So uh, take these, uh, the sentence, we usually read the upper part of the letters. Um, uh, you, I can read the, the, the top line, I, I cannot read the, the things at the bottom. It's very hard, uh, maybe the usually I could kind of discern, but the rest, it's really difficult. Um, same thing is, uh, yeah, this is, by the way, this is an idea that goes back uh, to uh, Maître Leclerc in the 1840s in France. Um, sometimes, by the way, if, if you're familiar with this, um, sometimes it's uh, misattributed to another person, to Emile Chaval, but he, he, um, he did this. Emile Chaval was much later, in case 
Um, uh, you've heard about this before. So this is from Maitre Leclerc, and he, he thought, oh, uh, we could cut all the Latin letters in half and uh, save a lot of space in our books, and our books would only be uh, half the price. Fantastic. Yeah. But of course, uh, it didn't quite catch on, um, and luckily, because who wants to read a novel like this? <clears throat> but uh, funny thing is, the same is true for Arabic. Um, and uh, I've got my command of Arabic is not as good, of course, uh, but uh, I've been told that the upper half is pretty well legible. I can imagine that the lower halves are not so legible, so because it, they're, most of the time they're pretty much the same. Um, the funny thing is, for Hebrew, it's the other way around. You know, the top halves of the letters are pretty much the same all the time, and the bottom halves carry the information or carry most of the information. So, so, she, uh, so she thought, um, wait a minute. We could take the upper halves of the Arabic letters and the bottom half of the Hebrew letters and we could stick them together, right? That would, that would be really cool. Um, we have a new hybrid writing system and she calls it Aravrit, you know, fantastic. Um, and it's, it actually works. Um, um, and she, uh, you know, this is uh, how you would combine um, letters uh, at, at the top, uh, uh, Arabic letter, at the bottom Hebrew letter. and um, but the problem is, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between Arabic and Hebrew letters, and especially not between Arabic and Hebrew languages. Um, and uh, so you would have to make find combinations for every Hebrew letter with every uh, Arabic letter. So it, you would already end up just doing this. You would end up with 640 combinations. Um, but then the problem is, they also connect, right? And then with all the ligatures, you would end up with tens of thousands of combinations possibly more than you need for CJK. Um, so, uh, so she gave up on the idea of making this into a font, uh, and it's, she calls it now, it's a lettering concept. So you can give her uh, a Hebrew and an Arabic word, and she will merge them together like this. And people can read this. This is the word Jaffa, uh, the, the name of the, um, of the town. Um, uh, or it's in, it has been in use a couple of times here, it's the, the um, a record cover for an uh, Israeli band called Orphaned Land. Um, fantastic. Yeah, this, uh, this is uh, the Aravrit um, uh, lettering concept in use. Okay, so this is cultural interventions. Uh, so you can say that the um, uh, Arabic and Hebrew uh, can get along very well together in a, in a common lettering concept. Fantastic. Aravrit. Um, now, but uh, you could say, yeah, this is nice and this is interesting, but does it really have an impact, right? It's just a few people who can use it, um, and uh, uh, and it's, that question is very valid. Does it really have an impact? Um, and that, that led me to the question: Where do we type designers have actual impact? Um, you know, for for other for, for other people uh, or for a lot of other people. Um, and this brought me to the to the third category, which I like to call enabling. And enabling, I call enabling, this is when type designers do something that, that empowers people. A very good first example for this is American type designer Juliet Shen. Um, and um, she also studied in, in Reading, like uh, some of the previous uh, people that I told you, uh, showed you about. And uh, and she did a font for Lushut Seeds, an endangered North American indigenous language. Um, if you look for it on the, um, on the UNESCO Interactive Atlas of the World's Languages in Danger, you find this about Lushut Seeds. Um, uh, a number of speakers, it's, it's close, to, um, close to Seattle in the, in the northwest of the US. Um, the white line you see here is the border with Canada. John Hudson not living far from there, obviously. Um, and, and you see the number of speakers, five, um, few, or, or fewer than five, and, th and they are elderly. Oops. Yeah. So this, this, is, um, this is a language at the verge of extinction, um, you might say. And um, one of the things, it is, it's so much easier to use uh, English for everything, also because uh, Lushut Seed um, has, is a, it's like, it looks like Latin, but it has some extra additions to it. Um, and, uh, and as 
Um, I'm quoting a, um, a Lushot Seed teacher that worked with Juliet. Uh, Lushot Seed is a beautiful language, but it doesn't look that way. And that was uh, one of the problems. The only typeface that was available was the uh, was a, a Times New Roman adaptation. And um, yeah, and so she thought maybe I could make a better font uh, for this, uh, make a better type design, so people are something that actually appeals to the eye and doesn't look as awkward. And so she came up with this. Um, and her, 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 um, her tooltip typeface for the tooltip tribe. Um, and, and, and it takes the, the shapes of the letters take um, um, correspond to or make references to the, to the traditional wood art of the tooltip uh, tribes or the Salish, uh, uh, which is the umbrella word for the tribes um, um, that use the, this language. And uh, when you look at it, typeface gives a much more even uh, flow on the page, and it's uh, it's much more legible. And this actually made a difference for people. You could finally have a typeface uh, that would really work for you, um, uh, work for reading it actually uh, properly. And and plus the added advantage that it looks more indigenous. Um, when I interviewed her about uh, about this project uh, uh, she also sent me this picture uh, this was the first time she saw the typeface in use um, by someone else they the Tula tip uh, uh, tribe they put it on their police cars you see here this uh, this thing here on the on the right this means Tula tip um, and uh, uh, sorry Tula lip sorry um, and the uh, uh, this is um, this was a photo that uh, accompanied uh, uh, an article that says um, that the police in uh, the, the tribal police was allowed to also check uh, on non-indigenous people <laughs> and uh, so they, they they were allowed to control uh, indigenous people but if, if, if you know if there was a, um, a, a, a non a white guy uh, like breaking the law they couldn't do anything and now they got the, they have the power to arrest non-indians and um, and they and they put uh, they proudly put uh, Julia Lip in uh, in their own typeface on their uh, police cars and they use Juliet's one um, and uh, and the result of this uh, where she where the typeface was one contribution actually there was a, were a couple of uh, um, interventions and a couple of actions uh, taken but the typeface uh, was an important part. Um, uh, that the result is that now the the tide has turned and uh, and the language is gaining speakers again um, and amongst other things um, uh, uh, due to uh, printing workshops uh, with kids they, who get to print the name um, in the Lushut Seed language fantastic so type design helped reverse the perishing of Lushut Seed so um, Juliet Chen helped save a language you cannot probably cannot say that she did it alone, but there's a lot of other uh, puzzle pieces that have to work together. But the typeface, I think, is really um, uh, was an important part of that. Uh, next uh, story I want to tell you uh, is um, about um, Chamra Patel, um, uh, founded by Mark Chamra and Neil Patel in the States. And they did, um, um, they did an African typeface, uh, which was recently released uh, and announced at uh, Etapai, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And um, out of th there's a lot to talk about this. I'll take one piece out of this. Um, the Enco, uh, the Enco language, the, which uh, or the Enco script, which is used for the Manding language or the Manding languages. There's uh, several ones uh, spoken in Western Africa. Um, and, and they did the first comprehensive, the first large family uh, for Nko. Uh, and you see it's a right to left script, uh, a little bit like, like Arabic, it also connects. And uh, this, is, um, this is not the first Nko font, but uh, the first um, comprehensive Nko um, family with uh, lots of weights here. I only have a slide with, uh, with, with, with this weight now. But also the but the very first one with italics um, in Nico. Uh, it was hard to implement because um, 
here uh, they, they had to, because not many uh, applications were supporting ECO in the first place. For instance, Facebook. And in order to write something on Facebook, um, they, uh, what they did is they, uh, they created an app where you could type uh, ECO and it would create a, an, an image, um, like a, a JPEG image of what you just typed. You see this here? And then you can post it in a photo album. And this way you could post ECO on Facebook. Um, and uh, I don't know what the current situation is. I think they fixed it now. You can actually type on Inco. You see the Inco keyboard also. And also they released an app um, uh, for a calculator with Inco uh, figures uh, on it, which was uh, and, and it was a very popular app in, in Western Africa. Um, uh, the, uh, this is part of their Kigilia typeface, uh, which they recently released, and uh, which covers, I think, uh, um, s seven uh, scripts of like uh, African Latin and 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 six uh, non-Latin uh, scripts, including Inco, and um, and this is now one of the I think the first um, really comprehensive African typeface um, uh, that that uh, that reaches hundreds of millions of people and makes a real difference in, in their lives. Um, another similar story um, is the situation in Mexico. Um, Manuel Lopez Rocha, um, he and his team, they, um, uh, they, uh, he, he's a designer at um, the Pampa Type uh, Font Foundry, um, and he, he, he did a project for the National Institute of Indigenous Languages in Mexico. And uh, you might not be aware of this, but Mexico has lots of languages um, and 68 non-Indo-European languages with 364 variants that can be grouped into 11 non-Indo-European families. Um, and I give you uh, an, an, uh, one example. This is a typeface that uh, covers a couple of these languages. Um, and uh, uh, they use Latin basically for, uh, for the indigenous languages, but you see Latin alone does cut it. They have to have some additions to it, uh, like that reversed R at the end of the long line, uh, or like this uh, crossed out letters uh, like these. And um, you could combine this, this long slash with, with letters in other typefaces as well, but in order to do it properly, you know, you, have, uh, you want to save the counter of the E, for instance, um, so they, that, they don't, they didn't just want to make a typeface that, that kind of works, they wanted a typeface that really works uh, very well. Um, and of course, main, they had to create also um, keyboard layouts and make keyboards for, um, for, these, uh, for these languages. Some of them, um, uh, there, there, were, there were no keyboard layouts uh, available for them. And they had to also teach people uh, how to use that uh, and, and spread the software. So, so that would be in use. And that also helped um, uh, people write in their own languages, which is really, really important. Um, uh, and which is something for me, as uh, someone coming from, from, from Western Europe, uh, all, all the technology has worked with Latin from the start. Uh, maybe very early, maybe there were no German umlauts or something, but you know, we could save ourselves. It's not really a problem. Um, for many other languages, this was a um, was real, uh, it was really, really problematic to do anything, uh, or, or you had to switch to another language, and this uh, and the, the feeling of liberation you have if you could finally type in your own in your own language and with your own script, um, this uh, uh, has been communicated to me a couple of times, um, and one person uh, who talked yesterday and but he didn't talk about what I'm gonna uh, talk about now is Mutu um, from Malaysia. Uh, and he, he, as he says, he's a font engineer and a total type geek. And when I said um, all the type technology started out with Latin, um, and like on early PCs, you would only get ASCII. Uh, actually, the, the second script that was uh, uh, pretty well supported was Tamil, uh, thanks to Mutu. Uh, and in that's because in 1985, uh, he, he hacked the EEPROM um, of, uh, of, of his PC to, uh, to, to display um, uh, Tamil. Uh, which was uh, fantastic. It was used even in, 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 in newspapers, magazines, books, uh, you can see. And a few other things uh, uh, he did. 
Uh, if um, I'm not going into detail, uh, please uh, 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 say hello to him in the break and ask him about all these his funny stories to tell about this. Um, so, uh, uh, one thing uh, 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 that I want to add, if you have a Mac, and I guess most of you do, uh, open the font book app on, on, your, on, on, your, uh, on your Mac and type his name in the search field. And then you can see, uh, see all the Southeast Asian uh, uh, typefaces that he contributed, more than uh, 50, I believe, uh, 50 fonts, 25 families. Amazing. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, and because it comes pre-installed on the Mac, this, uh, this reaches a lot of it. This enables uh, people to type in, in Tamil, in Oriya, in Malayalam, and, uh, and all these other great scripts. Uh, on the Mac, on, on, on their iPhones, um, uh, just uh, a great thing. Um, one uh, last thing that he did is, um, uh, in, in, um, in Malaysia, there's uh, a form of uh, Arabic called Javi, um, if I'm not mistaken. And what was very common amongst teenagers when they would uh, send each other SMS text messages, at the beginning, when, when the phones could, did not support Arabic, they would kind of have like a, a, a fake Latin transcription and use that. And, um, and then when finally the, the, the phones were able to support Arabic, um, then uh, that, that it was not, the, the teenagers would still uh, type it in the Latin, because that's what they were used to. And so what uh, Mutu did, he, uh, he created an, a Latin input method in order to write Arabic. So you would type in Latin, um, and, and the result would be Arabic. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, that, that way I can type Arabic too. Yes, it makes it accessible also for, <laughs> for non malays Okay, last person I want to talk about is uh, Fiona Ross. Um, because um, uh, I think that many of us type designers, we, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, kind of, and, and, and the person um, that's, that's a key person in this context is Fiona. Um, and uh, she did um, pioneering work at Linotype when Linotype transitioned uh, from hot metal to phototype setting in the late 70s and early 80s. And, uh, and, I, and especially she did a lot of work uh, that uh, ended up in, uh, in the Linotronic 202 and, and subsequent machines, uh, which was a... Uh, um, a, uh, in, in, in a type setting, image setting machine um, that, uh, that was very, very, uh, was in widespread use uh, at that time. Um, so if you did anything in photo type setting, you probably did it in, um, on the Linotronic. And uh, if you use the, the Linotype system, of course. Um, and we, I, we could talk for hours about our type designs, um, and there's a great quote, but uh, uh, neither Fiona nor I were able to trace it back. We, uh, we only know that Jordan Goffin, um, uh, he quoted someone else, but he also could not say anymore uh, where he got it, all, uh, got it from. But, but it's true anyway that if there's one person whose designs have been seen by the most people, it's Fiona Ross. Because she did uh, uh, dozens of uh, Arabic uh, typefaces, uh, many South Asian uh, typefaces, uh, uh, Devanagari, uh, Gujarati, you name them. Um, so used uh, throughout all, uh, all, all the printed newspapers in the 80s, basically used uh, uh, in, in India, for instance, used, used her fonts. Um, yeah, uh, that, that is her, a uh, famous photo of her uh, and her team in 19, I, I'm not quite sure which year that photo was. Um, it must have been in 1978 or the years thereafter. Um, but um, and they, uh, they together they produced 90 Arabic fonts, uh, and yeah, fantastic, so a great body of work. But I don't want to talk about her type design so much. I want to talk about something else, namely her so-called phonetic keyboard. Um, and uh, to to tell you what keyboards used to work like, or what keyboards, you know, um, how keyboards work. Um, you might think it's very straightforward. You type a key, yeah, and you get a letter from the font. Okay, so that's that's how it should work, right? Yeah, you might think. Actually, uh, if if 
if it works like this, and it did pretty much work like this, uh, because I'm simplifying a little bit for the sake of argument, you know, then what do you do if you have to ha uh, uh, if you have to use a different variant of a letter? Um, it's in Latin, it's not so common. In Latin, you might use the uppercase and lowercase, maybe, uh, or maybe the small caps. Um, of it. But for uh, Brahmic scripts, maybe you have a subjoined uh, version of a letter, um, or a connected version of a letter, or a positional form in Arabic. Um, then you would, if 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 it, if it works like this, then you need a separate key for this variant of the letter, okay? Which is kind of crazy because you end up with very big keyboards or with like uh, shift key, double shift key, and control alt shift keys and and uh, all kinds of modifier keys just. Uh, just to type all the variants, and it's very hard to learn how to use such a keyboard also. But this is basically, um, uh, okay, I'm simplifying a little bit, but this is about what the situation was like in the 70s. Uh, she had the idea of a phonetic keyboard to put something between the font and the keyboard um, that you would type phonetically, like you would type uh, uh, the scene key for the Arabic scene, uh, no matter which uh, position it was. Yeah? Uh, or you would type um, uh, the, um, uh, I don't know, the, the ka, uh, no matter, uh, it, the Khmer ka, no matter whether it, uh, no matter which shape form of it it was. Um, or the, or the, the Balinese, no, no, she didn't do a Balinese one. Um, but okay, you get the idea that you type, you use the same letter for all the variants of, uh, uh, the same key for all the variants of the letter, and then some magic happens. Right? Today we would call this a renderer, um, and, uh, and inside the renderer there are a uh, few things that, uh, that happen. There's a layout engine, shaping engine, and a rasterizer, and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and then the, the right shape is automatically picked out of the font. Yeah? Um, this is something we know today as um, the separation between character and glyph in, in OpenType. Um, it wasn't called like this back then in the late 70s, but it's, uh, it's basically the same concept. Um, and the, the, the stuff that's happening in, in between is what we now uh, know as, uh, yeah, as the renderer in combination with open type features. Um, and, and the key, or, or the, the, uh, her, her, her idea of the phonetic keyboard basically paved the way for these developments. I mean, it would still take another 15 years uh, to, um, or actually 20 years, and, and actually it's still being developed and many things are still being changed and, and bugs are fixed, of course. But the, uh, this, this idea uh, changed the, the way we, we type, actually, today. and we, we interact every day or every minute, every time we post something on Instagram, um, uh, or every time we send a message or write an email. Um, most of our writing is now, nowadays done um, on the keyboard, and and because of of her, we don't we have simple, easy to use keyboards, um, and and not uh, keyboards where we have separate keys for everything. Okay, uh, uh, it, it, uh, this there were similar ideas in 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 parallel parts of the industry, but um, I think uh, uh, Fiona's idea of the phonetic keyboard was the most successful one. Uh, this is uh, this is her, and I'm standing here on the left side. Uh, um, amongst uh, a group of her uh, red students uh, when she got the prize at TypeCon a couple of years ago. All the way to the left is Juliet Shen that I talked about. Liron in blue on the right half uh, of the screen and many, many other, uh, um, many of these you probably recognize. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Or which questions do you have? Um, um, do, we have do we have time for one more thing? Yes? Oops, I'm falling off. The, um, uh, then I'll, I want to show you something. Oops. And you know, last time around, um, I, I showed you um, uh, also a political typeface, uh, the, the Galata typeface, uh, in order to um, 
that, that, that I did to protest uh, Erdogan in, 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 in Turkey. Um, you know, and what I, there's an update to the typeface. Now when you try to type Erdogan, um, wait a minute. Uh, this is how you type it. Uh, it, it still will not let you type the word, but now it's in color. <laughs> so uh, it says Erdogan, yes, oh yes. Thank you, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take this, Erdogan, yeah. And what's even better for him, he gets, he gets the gone in rainbow colors, fantastic. Um, of course, all, all, the, all the other things are, are still in there, like the, uh, the one about the, the Gitti protests, if you remember. But of course, ever since, uh, since the last time I, uh, uh, when I showed you this, um, a lot of political things have happened, um, amongst which, uh, uh, like all the terrible things that happened in the political uh, landscape in, in Europe, um, and uh, especially like in the aftermath of the refugee crisis, and there is um, there is uh, one Italian politician uh, whose name I also wanted to put in, um, a guy called Salvini. Uh, he is uh, uh, the um, a, uh, I think the Interior Minister, uh, I believe, uh, of uh, of, of Italy, and he thought it's okay that. Uh, if the refugees come uh, or, or, or people flee across the Mediterranean and, and want to come to, uh, to Europe, it's okay to let them drown in the Mediterranean. And that's why if you type Salvini with this typeface, I let Salvini drown. Um, and, um, and, it, and it's a required ligature. There's nothing I can do about it. Sorry, Mr. Salvini. Um, and of course, for, um, uh, for our American friends, of course, if you write, if you write the current uh, uh, president's name, you have to use capital letters. Yes, because I, I have the largest capitals. Yes, uh, it's true. And if you type it, I, it's the typeface, typeface with the best hair you've ever seen. Um, yes, and yeah, it, it, it tells you what to do with Trump in case you don't know yet. Um, and it's, again, it's a required ligature. There's nothing you can do about it. Sorry, Mr. Trump. <laughs> yes, the dawn. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, you remember all the games uh, that uh, that we did. They are now all in color. Yay! And um, wait a minute, maybe I can. Uh, yes. Um, and um, oh, uh huh. Yay! Okay. Fantastic. I win against myself in Tic-Tac-Toe. Yes. Or this. Um, I love to play this uh, with the audience. Um, you know, this is rock. Uh, what, what do you call it in English? Rock, scissors, paper, or something. Uh, and um, I, I always say it in the wrong order, and it's a different order in every language, that's why I, um, but uh, one, um, that would be you. Uh, you pick one, uh, scissors, two, rock, or three, um, paper. Who is for one? Nobody. Who is for two, rock? A few people. Who is for paper? Uh, I think it's uh, rock. Uh, and, oh, now I know what to play. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. I have to play first. Sorry, sorry. Okay, no, no. That, that would be unfair. That would be unfair. Okay, no, no. Uh, okay, I type first. So, okay, let's do it again. Um, I, uh, uh, you are player two. Who is for scissors? Number one. Who is for rock? Number two. That's fewer people. And who's for paper? Ooh, that's the majority now. Ha, 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 player one wins. Yes, fantastic. First time I win, actually. <laughs> um, um, okay, let's let's do it again. Okay, um, give you a second chance. Okay, who is for um, scissors? Number one. Who is for rock? Yes. And who is for paper? I think that's rock. Then <laughs> I have cheating mode built in now in color. <laughs> I always win. Um, yes. Yeah, and the other things as well. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is a typeface, uh, maybe that's uh, subversively political, uh, using open type features. Um, so uh, that's one way we, uh, we uh, font engineers can contribute to a better place on this, uh, uh, on this planet. Okay, thank you very much, and have a lot of fun.